Welcome to Cape Verde for the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour season opener. The 2024 calendar is set to kick off with the kite surf. And what better place to set the ball rolling than Sal Island? It boasts one of the world's iconic waves in Ponta Preta, a right-hand point break that's bathed by stiff cross-offshore breezes that are perfect for this spectacular discipline. That's why the tour delights in returning year after year to this idyllic island. Ponta Preta offers the world's best kite surf athletes the chance to showcase their immense talent at the traditional season opener. Cape Verde's Ayrton Cozzolino won the 2023 men's world title at the final event of the five-stop tour in Brazil. Hawaii-based Muna White claimed the women's title there too after opening with a win in Cape Verde. And both athletes are back in Cape Verde to defend their titles in 2024. The opening day of the 10-day competition window immediately presented great conditions for the first eagerly anticipated battles. The contingent of Brazilian big hitters immediately showed they meant business, and none of them seemed phased by the nine-strong cohort of Cape Verdeans with local knowledge of Ponta Preta. The young Brazilian Pedro Matos was straight out of the gate and bossed one of the day's first heats. He swept aside two Cape Verde athletes with ease. It served as a warning to others. Arta Moraes did much the same soon after in another heat, but this time the surprise was that last year's Cape Verde winner, Machu Lopez, failed to put a score on the board. The Brazilians kept pushing. The young charger, Gabriel Benetton, easily dominated the heat with two big wave scores for the win. If anything, the Rio de Janeiro-based rider, Sebastian Ribeiro, was even stronger. He impressed the judges with powerful hacks and a flowing, surfy style to earn the highest scores of the day. He swept aside the backhand rider, Clement Rossero, the runner-up last year in Morocco. The Cape Verdean showdown between the old master, Mitu Montero, and his protege, Ayrton Cozzolino, was a mouth-watering prospect. Cozzolino came out charging and never let up. His 8.23 wave was the biggest of the day. Montero gave a good account of himself, but didn't have the answers and had to use the lifeline of a second round. And so it was that the two Cape Verdeans, Machu Lopez and Mitu Montero, found themselves up against it, facing elimination in the second round. But they didn't make the same mistakes twice. Lopez put two decent scores on the board and advanced. Montero's consistency with his strong hacks in the pocket ensured that he moved up the ladder. As the day wore on, the women were faced with trickier conditions in the dropping breeze and sets that proved elusive. Determined to regain her crown, the French former world champion Capuchin Delanoy has been working on her wave riding game and it paid off. Delanoy earned a big heat total for two solid waves, despite the conditions. Only reigning world champion Muna White had the answer to the young French woman. She hunted down the scant waves and put in two decent scores with a gliding surf style that racked up the largest heat score of the day in the women's. Day three of the competition dawned with a new swell pulsing into Ponta Preta. The stage was set for an epic day of action with the world's best eager to throw down. Title contender Brazil's Pedro Matos immediately signaled his intentions when he came out charging and booked a place in the quarterfinal. Machu Lopez won Ponta Preta last year, but his title challenge faded through the season. Here, it was clear he was eager to reset for 2024. Brazil's Sebastian Ribeiro is one of the most stylish surfers on tour, and in his heat against one of the event organisers, Joe Silva, he put two huge scores on the board. One, an incredible 9.8 out of 10 that helped him to a 19.33 heat total. It was the biggest score of the day and booked Ribeiro a berth in the quarterfinals. So that was the best hit of my life. I was, I was wishing that was a 40 minutes hit. Cape Verde and ripper Henrik Lopez found himself up against the charging Matos. The Brazilian opened with a big wave and just kept going bigger, racking up a 9.28 for a long ride. Even Lopez's sharp turns at the end of the heat weren't enough. 
The matchup of legendary Cape Verdeans Matthew Lopez and Mitu Montero held promise of fireworks, and it was a repeat of last year's final when Lopez got the upper hand. But this time, neither athlete, who both know the break like the back of their hand, could quite find the firepower to put the heat to bed. In the end, Montero earned a couple of solid scores that helped him get his nose out in front. Next up was a Brazilian showdown between Sebastian Ribeiro and Gabriel Benetton. Ribeiro scored the biggest wave of the heat, landing an 8.87, but found himself outgunned by his young compatriot's consistency. Benetton's backhand attack played to his strength and helped him get ahead. The first of the semi-finals saw Pedro Matos go up against Mitu Montero. It was clear to the judges that Matos' hard-charging form from earlier in the event seemed to have deserted him. By contrast, Montero was only getting better and better as the heat wore on, and he took the win with several solid rides. Ayrton Cozzolino came up against the Brazilian Gabriel Benetton in the second semi-final. Perhaps Benetton was overawed for the first time because he never really got going. Meanwhile, Cozzolino was on fire and opened with a 9.43 banger, backing it up with an 8.1 that secured him a place in the final. The all-Brazilian fight for the third podium spot pitted Pedro Matos against Gabriel Benetton. Matos hooked a big wave to open his account with an 8.3 and kept building. Benetton fought back and scored an 8.07 near the end of the heat that saw him come close, but Matos had done enough to take the win and third place by a fraction of a point. The final showdown between the Cape Verdeans, Mitu Montero and Ayrton Cozzolino in front of their adoring family, friends and fans lived up to its billing. In some of the best conditions seen in competition at Ponte Preta, the two heavyweights traded blows, going wave for wave. Montero, the old master, took a little time to find his groove, despite his instinctive knowledge of his home break, but find it he did, and he put some big numbers on the board. Cozzolino came out charging like a man possessed though. He was relentless, charging every wave with a ferocity that reflected his ambition. His scores just kept getting bigger until eventually he notched up a 9.1 for this barrel ride. It would give Cozzolino the win. Back on the shore, the crowd went wild and the pair were carried across the beach in celebration. Man, when I was, when I was about to, to hit the beach, I see all the crowd running, but I don't know, like, they're always running. Even I don't win, I like, I do wrong, whatever, but they're always running. So I was like, wow, I don't know if they're running for me, if they're running for me too. And I was like, something doesn't feel like right, I don't know, maybe I didn't win, you know, like, and I was like, when they say, yeah, you won, and I, I was, no, man, really, they didn't say it. And everyone was saying, man, you won, and my girlfriend said, you won. I look at myself, and then I, I realized that, that well, everyone was saying I won, and then I was like, already the, the first, uh, you know, the first water to go down with my face, you know, I was trying to, I was crying a bit, all the emotion out, you know, because it's really challenging here. <laughs> The women had their chance to battle for glory in perfect Ponte Preta conditions on day four of the Cape Verde World Cup, and the smaller field quickly advanced to the semi-finals. Switzerland's Camille Losseran had survived an earlier scare when her leash broke and she lost her board in the pumping swell. She was up against her old rival, Francis Capuchin Delanoy, who led for most of the heat with assured and committed riding. 
but with her last wave, Lotteran almost stole a march on the French teenager, only missing out by a fraction of a point. France's Charlotte Carpentier had the unenviable task of facing the Hawaii-based world champion Muna White. Carpentier had been training in the off-season in Cape Verde and knows the break. She put some good scores on the board. But White's wave selection, her ability to connect the sections and her flow were on another plane. She earned a 9.4 for one wave and advanced comfortably. The final was a banger between two of the wave game's best women, Capuchin Delanoy and Muna White. Delanoy has been working hard on her wave riding game and came to Cape Verde early. It showed in her performance, solid committed riding even in the intimidating swells. Yet White built her scores and was well in the lead before she cut loose in the last few minutes of the final. She was in her element and clinched the win with two perfect 10 point rides that closed out the heat in style. I mean, I was feeling pretty comfortable. Um, I'm used to bigger waves, so that wasn't too much of a problem. The wind was a little bit offshore, which is kind of normal here, but it's definitely a little bit tricky. Um, but yeah, I managed to make it work and it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> Cape Verde's Ponta Preta break has always held a special place in kitesurfing lore, and the historic conditions have written a new standout chapter in GKA history. And with their wins, world champions Ayrton Cozzolino and Muna White are part of that story. Be sure to follow the plot as it unfolds in Zult, Germany in August.